Welcome back to Let's Play Terraria. As you can see, I've built up a little home. I actually used my other character to build the home because I had this blue brick and the sweet silver stone background and all of this extra crap. It's all just aesthetic, so I figured it really doesn't matter to cheat, and I would really rather use the best tools available instead of taking forever to mine up stuff and make what would really have been a much uglier house. If you didn't notice, I really like the water candles. Um, you get these in dungeons, so this character couldn't possibly have gotten any yet, unfortunately, but I really like them, and I thought they went well with the blue motif I've got here. And this is pretty much the structure I used for my first house, and I kind of like it. I found some place underground that it was a really nice cave, and I made an under mostly underground tower like this, and then I had this sort of you know, shunt here that lets me access all of the floors easily. And it keeps out monsters fairly well. The monsters have to fall in. Unfortunately, the NPCs tend to leave the doors open, but the nice thing about this layout is the NPCs never leave the house. Otherwise, they can, like, wander around in the darkness and be general dumbasses because they're NPCs. But this pretty much prevents that. I'm not sure what I want to build above ground or if I will, but I sort of like the setup. And then at the bottom is my room. I just use one of these beds as a spawn point. I like to spawn near the nurse because then when I die, I can heal up. Though the nurse spawned when my other character was here, um, I really shouldn't have her yet. I can't actually use her that much yet. So as you can see, oh, I'm missing a little bit of health apparently. But yeah, she's useful because when you spawn, like, say I have 400 health, I still spawn with only 100, so when I die, I'll need the heal at the nurse if I have more than 100 health, which is not very useful yet. And my merchant moved in over here. And I can still move in one more NPC, which is why I need my bombs in my inventory. Just carry one. Oh! Oh! And uh, I can finally use my Fallen Stars to make a Mana Crystal. It's very exciting to get these at first. I no longer care about stars in my main character. But you get a Mana Crystal, eat it like a potion, and you get Mana now. I can't use it yet. At least I don't think I have anything that uses Mana. I don't. But that doesn't really matter. I also built a Silver Broadsword because... Pretty soon I should be able to make the Blade of Grass a pretty good weapon. Don't know if I'll actually use it, but I sorted out my items into these boxes. I'll take some wood. Shouldn't need much. Oh, right. I need to make another bed. Cool thing about the underground forest, or the underground jungle, is that I can actually make a spawn point down there. Even though it's underground, those golden shrines we saw, well, we saw one, I can actually use that as a spawn point if I just stick a bed in it and turn it into a normal house. Also, to craft glass, you just use sand. Makes sense. You need a furnace to do it. And then with glass, you can make bottles. What do I need all these bottles for? Bottles make potions, surprisingly. And to make potions, you just need some... Oh, you don't need as many mushrooms as I thought. You need mushrooms and you need gel. And you can make a lot of these with not too much stuff. I have more gel, don't I? I think I had a stack of 99 somewhere. This is pretty much the best use of gel, in my opinion. It also makes torches, but you require very little gel to do that, so it's not really a problem. Cool thing is, even this early on in the game, I can make tons of healing potions, no problem. In fact, this is really too many to bring with me at once. I'm trying to sort out my inventory from the start this time. Um, I have a system that I use to do that. Let's keep two sets of potions with me. 
these items on the top are equipable or directly usable items so I've got my weapons here I've got my potions I don't have anything else to bring with me yet but like my armor and stuff will go up there and all of my tools down here I have stuff that I can craft with or placeable blocks for architecture you know stuff that's not immediately usable and the split between those two seems to be fairly even in terms of number of chests used so, oh right I need to make that bed I think I can make a couple beds so I may as well so make two spawn points if I need to but yeah let's go use this in my opinion is the second best weapon in the game because it's really good it's really fast it does not have a good range but I don't really care that much about that and it does it deals really good damage especially damage per second it's crazy so yeah I would say I would take this over the fiery greatsword any day any freaking day the fiery greatsword is a big slow piece of crap that um considered one of the best weapons but the muramasa is easily the best weapon especially in terms of damage per second also these guys are a joke now except if they touch me i will freaking die but uh in terms of killing them much much easier see look at that you're not so tough Ow, 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 those, those are so tough. But, oh, hello. The thorns, I did not realize they did so much damage. In fact, yeah, I've got to be pretty careful around them. Especially with, it's mostly just because of my armor. They hurt a lot less when you have better armor, but they still hurt. Which is different from the, the thorns and the corruption. If you have any decent armor, they do just one damage. I do not have decent armor. Oh, right! That's... Um, having a projectile weapon does come in handy. Um, even if right now it's just because I can break thorns without getting too close. That's a good enough reason, really. Uh, one thing I'm missing that I really should have to explore the uh, underground jungle properly is a grappling hook ouch but can't do anything about that i need a hook to build one of those and i don't have one to get a hook i need to find skeletons and unfortunately exploring here generally means oh yay that guy came exploring in here generally means i won't be finding any skeletons at all Come on, die. These guys have relatively pretty high health, so uh, even with a good weapon, they can take a bit of beating to kill. Also, uh, always want to be careful around the hornets. Kill them before you... Oh my god. Mess around with this stuff. Also, I should really have my... Healing potions closer to me. I hate if I have something on keys like six through zero. If I go to quickly press them, I usually end up pressing the wrong one. So I just try to avoid needing those. Like, cause if I, the problem is if I went to go and quickly get my torch out now, then uh, sounds like a euphemism. But uh, if I were to do so it would suddenly it might suddenly accidentally use the uh mirror that brings me home which i really don't want to do oh my god okay hurts a lot less than i thought it would but still painful this is a lot of sand that's quite an excessively abundant amount of sand i must say didn't think it would be that tall. Oh well, over we go. Also, I have enough... I have enough roses to build that awesome 
thing I told you about, the awesome weapon. I'm probably going to build the Thorn Chakram first. The problem, though, is that I do not have enough stingers, so I need to kill a bunch more bees or hornets. Speaking of the bees and hornets, Sun had a cool idea to use, um, or to make, I should say, a boss that's like the queen of the hornets, and you can, I don't know, use the bunch of the stingers as a summoning item. The jungle really could use a boss. I think it'd be really sweet. Break that chest. Let's see. Shoot, I need a door. No, I won't. I won't need a door. I'll just break the ceiling. Did you stop making that noise? I think they fixed the problem where. Shoot. I think I need a bit more room actually. So. I think the bed can't be touching a wall as part of the spawn requirements. Don't quote me on that, but I think it is correct. Also, if this were on my main account, I would collect all of the gold because I love. Well, I actually don't usually bother, but I do love collecting. Oh, right! I forgot to seal off the top there. You also need... Huh. Shoot. What's the problem here? You also need light for a spawn point. Why you no spawn? Oh, whatever. The spawning stuff, um, there's a minimum size requirement that's never quite easy to figure out what the hell you're missing. At least I think that's what the problem I'm hitting there. There's some odd requirements that I'm never 100% sure when I fulfill or not. But... Oh, I have lots of... Oh, crap, I forgot to save my money. Crap. Well, I no longer think that it doesn't matter if I die, unfortunately. Come here. Come here. I won't hurt you. I'll just kill you. This claim you're definitely hurt. Come here. That's it. Good boy. Die. Die for daddy. Very good. Oh. That was not bright, but whatever. I knew that was going to happen, I just didn't really care. Also, a nice thing about the enchanted boomerang is that it lights up the area that you throw it in. So, uh, you can use it to see a little bit too. You can use it to scout out an area. I'm not sure why I moved those potions. It gives me easier quick button access, but I'm so used to pressing zero to get the, crap, to get the potions. Ow. Oh, Did you die? Oh, there's two of them. Come on. Okay. Torch on. This is why I miss my ball of light. I hate messing with torches. My orb of light, rather. Ooh, dynamite. Alright, and I'm gonna end the vid and I'm gonna head back to my spawn, actually. Break this chest first, though. So, next time, more exploring the underground jungle. Uh, thanks for watching.